uh, in this night we are going to talk with uh, one bet, uh, one uh, important bet for the for the health in the world. Uh, I want to to show you Mark Balituto. Hello, good night here in Spain. Good afternoon in New York City. Hello, nice to nice to talk to you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are reading a lot of things about your job here in Spain, and, and a lot of people want to know what you are doing and now. No, you are talking with me now, but what is your job in in, in your day today? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm a wildlife veterinarian, and so my job is actually to travel the world and um, approach different wildlife disease concerns. So. Some of these require me to investigate um, diseases of pandemic potential, like what we're worried about with coronavirus. Um, other times I am working on investigating just general health of specific wild, wild animals that are in, that need our help, like the pangolin. Um, for the last year and a half, I've actually been living in China, in Chengdu, China, helping to train Chinese veterinarians how to better take care of giant pandas. It's a very interesting thing, and, and I think that uh, a lot of people don't. Can, it's in, impossible to think in in your job because you are working a terrific place. <laughs> you are going inside, and you are like in a film of Batman. <laughs> yeah. How um. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so actually, um, for the last five years, I've been working on a very large project. It's called. Predict. This is a USAID funded project. This is the United States Agency for International Development. And the project has been focused on trying to essentially predict where the next pandemic is going to come from. Um, what we're doing is we're looking at viruses that have the potential to cause pandemics like Ebola virus, like coronavirus, influenza viruses, and various other viruses that have caused problems in the past. What we do as a veterinarian, my focus is on evaluating um, wildlife animals and livestock together. And these, are, these include the animal species that are most likely to carry viruses that people can get, like bats, like primates, and like rodents. And so it's my job then to go out to these countries, especially in Myanmar, where I've done most of my work, and train the local veterinarians how to restrain these animals, how to capture these animals, and then how to take blood samples, oral samples, rectal samples, and safely protect themselves from contracting a virus, but also ensure that they're collecting the right samples to be sent to the laboratory so that way their country can find these viruses before they get into the human population. Perfect. Your, your, your words are very simple to understand for all the people. And I think the, the, the big mass of people in, in the world don't, don't understand nothing about our job, our bad job uh, finding. You are a, a virus hunter. <laughs> You are looking yeah. always the possibility to, to, to the virus make infections in the humans. Right. It's important that the people know that the veterinarians not are only looking for animals. For pets. For pets. Or no, for only health, animal health. It's uh, one health, no? You're absolutely right. And in fact, one health, that title is incredibly important for this job. So like you said, As a veterinarian, my training was on dogs and cats and on farm animals. But I have to be able to branch out and look at these wild animal species as well to be able to have one health aspect. And I work alongside a physician, a medical doctor, who at the same time as we are looking at these wild animals, in the same location, we're also looking at the people in these villages that interact with these animals. Because the samples that we're collecting, the, the viruses that we're looking for in the animals, we're hoping to also show that the behaviors that people have, like eating animals, like looking in their guano or collecting their feces for fertilizer, or farming them, will lead them to contracting these viruses from these animals. 
So like I said, at the same time as we collect samples from the animals, we're also collecting it from the people that live in these villages because then we can determine the behaviors, the traditional practices that people have, have the potential to leading them to contracting viruses of pandemic potential. And if we, if we are able to establish that relationship, we can work with the governments of that country to help ensure policies and education are implemented to prevent this from happening in the future. One thing, I, uh, it's very important that the people know that uh, animals, we need a, a, a very important health uh, way. It's, it's, it's impossible that in this year, in this moment of, uh, of our life, uh, one person can get one animal and <laughs> introduce it in, in, in his mouth. Right. Without nobody looks, this animal uh, will come uh, nothing. And now in, in China, the, there are ne new laws, no, uh, for right. this. There are no, no, new laws, yes, in China about uh, eating um, animals, this kind of animals. This is a very important mm. uh, way, no, for, for right. people. Um, so like you said, like I said, I, I've been working in China for a year and a half now. And um, you're right. This new law that they're putting in place in September is to curtail the amount of wildlife that they're consuming. It doesn't fully address the consumption of wildlife because there are a few loopholes and, and traditional practices they're going to maintain, but it is definitely a step in the right direction. And this is exactly what we need from our government leaders. I, I, I continue. I want to know two things. What, what about your opinion about the actual pandemic yeah. here in, in about the COVID? Uh, uh, what's the question? What's your opinion about the evolution of the epidemic in the world? Is the going COVID. To be, oh, COVID sure. Hmm. So the evolution of COVID-19 throughout the whole world. So this has been a, a big thing because, um, well, obviously, but uh, while I was working through this PREDICT project, the goal is to prevent these things from happening in the first place. However, we know that there was something like this with, that was going to happen. I think looking back 100 years at the 1918 uh, influenza pandemic, mm -hmm. it killed almost 8 to 10% of the world's population. At the time, the world's population was only about 1 billion to 1.5 billion people and killed 60 to 80 million people. Now you advance the clock 100 years later, we're now at 7.5 billion people. If we have another massive pandemic like that, where six to eight percent of the population is killed that's almost 600 to 800 million people more that are going to die the population of the western hemisphere so the hundred the 350,000 people that have now died do not i think it's terrible that we had that kind of a loss but it's almost a guarantee that we are going to have a bigger another or an even bigger pandemic coming yeah. sooner yeah. than later not another hundred years from now but probably within the next five to 10 years at the exponential rate that the world's population is growing. The world's population, the people, they demand a lot of resources. And what happens is they require more agriculture. So taking down the wildlife areas, the, 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 the forests and the jungles where these animals normally live uh, for, for farms or for development, like for commercial industry or for roads and planning. And so all of these, these, these ways are, are methods where we can actually be exposed to these wild animals that, that have normally lived without any problem. But as we become more and more exposed to these animals, we have more and more opportunity to catch a virus of pandemic potential. And as the population grows, there'll be more of a concern because people will be living on top of each other and not spread out. And so the chances of the virus is spreading are that much higher. So like I said, the necessary need for resources as the population grows, it only shows we're going to have more of these pandemics as time goes by. <laughs> I think uh, all the same, more or less, than you, than you uh, tell to us. Uh, and the last thing, because we are going to, to talk with a Mexican vet, 
a, a, a marvelous girl that work with the 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 people that are with COVID and they go with uh, his she dog works, she works to, a, to the hospital to, she works to, to, in, to make happy yeah. the, the, the patients. Yeah, she works in a hospital. There's a person who works in a, in a, in a, in a hospital, a woman that uh, uh, she cares about uh, 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 people ill of, uh, yeah. of, uh, of COVID. Um, yeah. And she worked with his with her with her what, dog. And yes, a, a, a pug. <laughs> it's a pug. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we are going to talk. I, I think that is a very <laughs> risk dog. <laughs> 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 well, and the last thing, I want that if it's possible that you tell us three things, three important things that all <laughs> the population and the first time the important people of all the world uh, must have in her head in yeah his head. okay three things sure three important things that right never I'm, <laughs> I'm absolutely very glad so here's three things um one is wildlife you know we know that this is coming from wildlife and we know that many of the pandemics we've had recently in the last 20, 30 years have come from wildlife. Yeah. Reducing consumption and reducing the exposure to these wild animals will help prevent these diseases from happening in the future. That's one. Number one. two, yeah. we have to know that this is a global situation. This is not the US, Spain, or China's situation. This is a worldwide situation going forward. And so we need to be working together, not against each other not mm -hmm. being fearful of people from different nations i'm the first you are the second you are the third not right and the third one that is um an investment in our next generation because if we are to be able to prevent these from happening in the future we have to encourage the next generation to consider careers in areas like this perfect uh, i only can tell you thank you very much Thank you for your job, for being bet, <laughs> <laughs> for your life with wildlife. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, really thank you very much, you. Mark Balituto. Uh, have a good night. I have you. Uh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> good night. Virtual hacks. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Bye, bye now.